Welcome everyone to data structures and algorithm tutorial series. In this tutorial series, we are going to learn all the basic things needed to crack a DSA interview. So if you haven't subscribed to the Edignite NGO channel yet, please like, share and subscribe to the Edignite NGO channel right away. So uh, in this lecture, as this is the first lecture, we will learn about basic of data structure as in what is data structure, what is algorithm and the implementation of code at memory level. Okay, at mean memory level here, if I speak about mean memory, I, I will denote, I will always denote to RAM, random, that is random access memory. Okay, so before we begin with the learning concepts, okay, before we begin with the concepts, let us understand the need. Let us understand the need. Why do we need to learn data structure and algorithm or why is concept of data structure and algorithm so important? So, what is the need? What is actually the need? to learn the data structure and algorithm or why do we need to learn data structure and algorithm okay so data structure and when we write a code okay when when we when we write a, a code when we write a code then we want to solve a problem okay but there are many solution more than one solutions to that particular problem that means that uh, this a problem can be solved in more than one code but we want a code that is okay uh, we we want a, a code first that takes less amount of space okay less amount of main memory okay so it it takes less space it utilizes less less space okay it utilizes less space as well as it gets executed in less amount of time okay it gets executed in less amount of time okay why do we actually need it because when we make applications when we actually make build applications or build web applications then we want a scalability scalability of our code okay and there we need to need to handle a very large input okay we need to handle a very large input so we want a code that takes as less time as possible and as less space as possible okay so it takes lesser number of resources as well as it gets ex executed in lesser amount of time and this is where this is where dsa comes into play okay this is where dsa comes into play so dsa is used dsa is used to make your code more efficient okay dsa i'll write dsa is used to make your code more efficient okay it is used to make your code more efficient okay so this was about this was about need of uh, of data structure and algorithms okay this was about need of data structure and algorithms okay now we would look at at data structure what is data structure and what is algorithm okay so let us look first at data structure so data structure data structure that is dsa okay or ds let let me just write only ds over here okay so ds ds data structure that is the is an arrangement of data okay it tells us how the data will be arranged so ds or data structure is arrangement arrangement of data arrangement is an arrangement of is arrangement of data okay or we can we can see it as an organization of data how how actually the data is organized okay but it is very 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 different from a database okay data in a database 
the data is organized either in the tabular form okay tabular form or in the document format if it is a no sql database but that's a very different thing from data structure okay let me give you some examples to uh, differentiate for you to differentiate between data structure and database and uh, uh, clearly understand what is actually data structure okay so here we have several examples okay here we have several examples such as an array okay we here we have array array is a data structure here we have array as specific arrangement of data data will be arranged data will be arranged in a sequential format okay the address will be stored in a sequential format then we have linked list okay we have linked list so let me write linked list linked list okay so example is a linked list okay so that is a data structure we also have several things like stack we have heap okay in stack is actually analogous to a stack of books where only the top element can be accessed can be operated upon or can be deleted then we have queue where top and bottom only we can only access top and bot bottom most elements okay so this was about data structure and now let us look at algorithm okay so let me move down a bit okay i am moving down okay so over here we will learn about algorithm and implementation of memory okay memory implementation so let us look at them first of all let us look at algorithm what is actually algorithm okay so i'll i'll share you an example okay so if you want if uh, someone has asked you to take some you can say take some groceries okay to buy some groceries if your mom has asked you to buy some gro groceries then you will think first you will think in your mind that what you need to do first you need to take the bag from where you want to store where you will store the groceries okay then you need to take your wallet and then you need to take your the list of groceries okay so this can be regarded as different different data structures that will contain the data okay that will arrange the data your bag will arrange different groceries then you will have a list okay a list of items okay so that is also can be considered as a data structure okay and then what you will do you will follow a specific algorithm to go to the grocery shop okay so if you are going by walking okay if you if you want to go if the grocery shop is near then you will you will just instruct yourself that first you need to move some steps forward then some steps to the left then some steps to the right and so on so this is the algorithm okay this is the algorithm algorithms uh, algorithm tells us uh, about how to solve a problem how a problem can be solved a steps okay it it is a series of steps okay it is a series of steps that solves a problem okay that are used to solve a problem so let me define the algorithm in a very simple language so algorithm i will just write algo okay a l g o algorithm so algorithm algorithm is a series of steps okay a series a series of a series of steps okay a series of steps that that uses a series of steps that uses data structure okay that uses data structure the the bag over here was data structure okay that uses data structure to solve to solve a given problem okay so it uses data structures to solve a given problem so algorithm is a series of steps that uses data structure to solve a given problem in an efficient manner okay so it is used to solve a given problem and it is used to solve it very efficiently okay 
so let let me just write in efficient manner okay in in efficient manner okay so that is algorithm okay so uh, now we will learn about memory implementation okay the the code uh, implementation of code at memory level okay so let us learn about it so implementation at memory level pardon me for my handwriting okay so over here over here let us say that this is our main memory okay this is our main memory okay this this is the main memory so whenever you execute your code okay whenever you execute your code the code gets loaded in this segment okay it gets loaded in the code segment okay then we can have initialized and uninitialized data and then we will have stack as well as heap okay so these are the sections this this is the the code okay over here over here the code will get okay so this is the code segment and this this is where we we write our initialized and uninitialized data okay initialized and uninitialized global variables okay so let let me just write initialized initialized and uninitialized data and uninitialized uninitialized okay initialized and uninitialized data so above okay we have initialized and uninitialized global variables and above we have our stack as well as we have our heap so this way this way the memory gets distributed the main memory of of a particular uh, of a particular device gets it, it gets implemented okay it everything is stored in this main memory and now we are going to talk about stack okay how the things work in stack so over here over here i will just paste a code okay i think you can you can see you can see the code so this is the code let me just uh, give s over here small s okay small s over here so this is actually the code i will use this code let me move up a little bit okay and yes this is an example code so we will see how uh, everything gets stored in stack so this is actually not the code of any language this is the pseudo code okay this is actually pseudo code so implementation of the code starts from the main method okay it starts from the main method so if the implementation starts from the main method and now let us draw a stack okay i will only draw stack and heap over here okay so let let me draw stack as well as heap for you okay so we have a stack as well as heap okay so over here when the main method gets executed okay when when we execute the main method what happens is there is a layer okay in in our stack the main method gets gets a record where where it stores all its variables and and all all its methods over there okay so main method gets called okay main method gets a record over there now listen to me carefully what happens is when uh, when sum of squares okay here sum of squares method over here right over here it is it calls one more method okay this variable sum of squares calls a method sum underscore squares okay it calls this method so execution of main method gets paused okay execution of main method gets paused paused and until until this particular thing as is getting executed okay so we cannot now operate over this main method okay 
so uh, we have one more record okay in this stack we will have one more record on top of the main method that will be sum underscore squares okay s s it will be sum underscore squares where we will have two variables where we will initialize two variables okay so let me just sync it okay where we will initialize two variables that is a2 and b2 okay so over here let, let me just try a2 and b2 a2 where we will initialize and b2 okay so we will initialize two variables over here that will be a2 as well as b2 okay so that is that that is sum of squares a2 and b2 now sum underscore square is calling one more method okay so over here as soon as the cursor the pointer will reach this particular line this the execution of sum underscore squares will get paused and it the square method will get executed okay so let me just have one more stack over sum of square okay so square method will get executed which will initialize x variable okay which will initialize x variable and then then it will return it will it will it will return the x square it will return the x square to the previous one okay so it will return x square to the previous one okay so now the execution of the square method is getting go, has got completed okay so we can we can clear the memory we can clear the full memory okay so after it has returned a square and b square okay after it has written a square and b square this particular thing will get executed okay it will this particular line will get executed then it will be this line then it will be this line and it will return sum okay it will return sum to the main method now the execution of this method has got over so the memory of this will be cleared okay so now we can now directly access the main method okay we can now directly access the main method so this way execution happens okay and now whenever whenever this has got whenever we have main method getting executed okay whenever the main method is getting executed and after the execution of main method the stack will be cleared okay it will be fully cleared so this way this way the code is getting implemented over stack okay now what is the use of heap okay so consider that we have several methods okay consider that we have several methods okay that one is calling another and another is calling the third one or second one and then the third one okay and we have a, a variable okay we have we actually have a variable inside one one of the methods okay let us say that we have an array okay we have an array in in one of the methods in between okay in one of the methods that is in between the records okay it is not at the topmost record so we have an array over here okay we have an array over here now we cannot directly access this array okay we cannot delete or access or operate over this array until this method okay this method gets executed method on top gets executed so we can only access this array whenever when this method gets executed and when the this okay the method in which array is contained is at topmost level of the stack okay until then we cannot access it or we cannot delete it or initialize it okay and this is where heap comes into play okay what we do we dynamically okay it is uh, it is used for dynamic memory okay we request our heap we request our heap 
to uh, to give a dynamic memory okay dynamic memory for array of uh, of length 3 let's say array of length 3 over here okay so as now array is in is in heap okay is a time is in dynamic memory we can we can access it we can delete it and we can we can operate over the, this array and we don't need to wait wait for the methods to get executed so this is dynamic memory allocation and heap is generally used in dynamic memory allocation yes this is just an just an overview of heap and stack and we will learn everything in detail okay so this was about heap stack and memory implementation okay implementation of things at memory level now uh, before ending the lecture i would like to say that we will use, we will implement the data structure and algorithm code in C, C++, okay, C, so the prerequisite is either you should know C or you should know C++. This is because generally the interviewers expect that you know, you know the basics of C or C++ and if you know don't know the basics of it then do watch the one shot video in case of c and tutorial series in case of c++ to to understand or to get knowledge about the basics at edignite ngo channel so that's it for this particular session thank you everyone